Hi everyone, so um, let's do the next video. So in this video, it's going to be a relatively short one. Uh, we're actually going to talk about the IoT detection service um, that is included in some subscription bundles uh, for the FortiGate firewall. So it's not included in ATP, it's not included in UTP, but it is included in the Enterprise bundle. Um, you can purchase it as a la carte, i.e. you can just simply have this license enabled and, and, and not have IPFs or web filtering. Um, but a good way of checking if you have it or not is to go to system and then FortiGuard and it's this subscription it's, it's this subscription here. Uh, Industrial DB is, is also kind of related, but for, for IoT purposes, it's this one here. Um, I've had it active on my appliance uh, for the last month. Um, it expired a couple of days ago. Um, however, the um, I've got all the information that I would need to, to create this this video. Um, so what it does is if you will, you go to dashboard and then users and devices, you will see that uh, this is my home firewall. It is detected and profiled sixty two devices. Uh, what it's going to do is it's when a device, um, when traffic passes through the FortiGate firewall, um, it uses DHCP fingerprinting um, and uh, an OUI MAC lookup to try and determine the device. Now, all FortiGate firewalls have a built-in database, let's say. Maybe it's, let's say it's good for maybe 500 appliances. Um, but the the IoT detection subscription that I showed you enables devices that are not able to be identified to be compared against a much larger database, which is in 40, uh, 40 guard. So as you can see here, there's actually a couple of devices that live within my network that haven't been able that are not haven't been able to be profiled. Um, Whereas there's an actual, there's, there's a bunch of devices, let's have a look at Canon. So it knows that there's a Canon printer on my network, or um, there's a cam, there's a, a, a camera on there. Um, this is instrument. Uh, there's, a, there's, a to, there's a Tony box um, on, on my network. Now, where this has been particularly useful for, for my clients is, we enable this um, subscription. We let it run and profile the customer's network for a couple of weeks. And then we're able to present the customer with some findings around what we have found. And as an example of this is some of my clients, uh, there's been change in the, in the infrastructure department. Maybe it's a new IT manager. Um, and they simply do not know what, an, what IoT devices are connected up to their network. So we found things like Hikvision cameras, uh, fridges and washing machines, uh, industrial machinery, that kind of thing connected up to the network. Um, so what, what the gate is gonna do is it, it finds it, um, probably not a good example of that one there, it'll find the MAC address. Um, it will tell you that it's been detected via the uh, IoT detection service. It'll tell you the, its IP address, the operating system, and, and what device family um, it is um, associated with. Um, so once we've got this asset list, what we've then been doing is we've been presenting that to our customers, and it's been opening up conversations about how to segment these devices. So are they on a flat network at the minute? Or should we be creating some firewall policies to only allow hit vision cameras to be able to speak to the internet um, and nothing else? Um, now, if you're running a, a flat network, um, there will definitely be another video about this, but you could use 40 switches um, to uh, have no intra VLAN communication enabled. So if you've got all devices on VLAN 1, um, anyone that knows anything about networking would know that 
devices instantly that VLAN will be able to communicate with each other. So if I've got PC, a PC, one PC and a server, and they're inside the VLAN one, then they will be able to speak to each other. Well, in operational technology environments, you definitely might not want that. So you might want the devices to be inside the same VLAN, but you uh, want to control if those devices are able to speak to each other. And that can all be done via 40 switch um, and uh, firewall policies to essentially control uh, intra VLAN communication. So the question that you might ask is, how would you actually enable this? Is it a case of just enabling the license and then the FortiGate uh, does its thing? Uh, not exactly. So you need to uh, obtain the license. I recommend that you wait a couple of hours for the license on the database signature updates to actually pull through. Um, and then once you've done that, you need to go over to network interfaces and then uh, typically, this is only enabled on uh, interfaces that face towards your LAN. Um, so if I look at the 40 switches and the internal interfaces that I have on my uh, 60E here, um, the, if I look at the, the default VLAN here, um, you need to scroll down and then there is an option for device detection. Um, and you simply uh, enable that um, there. And, now, a little bit of a, a tip and a trick and something to be mindful of. Um, I have seen actually enabling this on an interface, strip DHCP config off the interface. So make sure that before you enable this, you take a command line backup of the interface configuration just to make sure that when you do enable this, it doesn't strip any um, config off the appliance because I, I have seen that. So one of the other um, features that uh, this license has the capability to do is if you browse over to Dashboard and Security Fabric and then click Asset Identity Center, this is essentially a copy of what I just showed you before, which is on the Dashboard uh, user and device. Um, you can see that not in my case, but um, there's a section here called IoT Vulnerabilities. Um, so this is taken from the documentation. I'll just bring this over. You can see that there's a device here. It's been categorized as uh, a Windows machine, um, but it does have uh, some IoT vulnerabilities associated with them. So you can click into the appliance um, and you're able to see the CVEs that are associated uh, as a vulnerability that is unique to, let's say, that washing machine or, or that fridge. So it, it's quite useful. So um, for the uh, IoT vulnerability, uh, and to actually have it matched against known CVEs, um, you do need to have application control enabled, um, at least in monitor mode. So if you look at this firewall policy here, um, you can see that I've got application control enabled uh, and it's the default profile, which I'll show you in a minute, which is essentially just going to monitor all applications. Um, this is a requirement for the CVE lists. Um, just to be clear as well, sometimes for some application control profiles, you do need to be doing full deep packet or SSL man in the middle inspection. Um, there's going to be a there's going to be a huge video about that because the amount of times that I see uh, appliances that have got things like antivirus, application control, IPS enabled, and they're not doing full SSL man in the middle is probably like nine out of ten. So we'll do a video, a video on that. But I just wanted to go through um, what are the requirements to have the CVEs matched um, in the list. So that brings uh, this video to uh, a close. Um, as I said in the video. Uh, I've had quite a lot of success with this license recently. Um, lots of companies, organizations really want to understand uh, what their IoT device estate is. And if you're able to um, provide them with an asset list and some uh, vulnerability information using various CVEs around uh, what potentially might be a risk, then it started to open up conversations with our clients about either um, our uh, upgrade from UTP or ATP to the enterprise bundle, um, or we uh, flex VM. Um, 
or but more importantly how to segment uh, a network so what, what what tools might you use so you've got 40 switch uh, and then in some cases as well it's opened up a conversation about 40 NAC uh, because using 40 NAC um, the profiling um, and the segmentation i.e. being able to drop a certain IoT appliance into a certain VLAN let's say VLAN 5 um, can be all automated um, so that's everything for this video. Um, as always, I'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Um, I am looking to push out a couple of videos a week um, at the moment, so we'll see you in the next video.